Hello! Welcome back to the second session of the Collage course. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use your decorated papers from the first session um, to make either a simple seascape or moorland scene. I am going to be working from a couple of images I can just show you here. Um, I'm going to be working from these two images that I rather like the colours of and um, I'm going to take different elements of these to combine to create a collage image but you could use your imagination if you prefer. Okay, so here are some examples of some I've done earlier. This is a, more, a little moorland scene, as you can see, quite a stormy sky. Um, another one here. This time I've actually worked back into um, the, the collage using sort of paints and marker pens and things like that, which I'm going to show you later at the end of this as well. And here's a little seascape, okay. Um, this obviously much more of a summary summary scene. So you can decide whatever you would like to do, um, but I'm going to show you a moorland scene now. Okay, here's one um, I'm just about to start. So it's a good idea to do a very light sketch, I think, of your sh basic shapes um, that you want to collage before you start. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a sky area using some Analinky um, paints that we um, I showed you last time. Okay, so the Analinky paints that you can see. Um, or you could use watercolours, um, or you could use watered down acrylics, um, poster paint, anything you like. Or if you prefer, you could collage your sky. Um, I just prefer, I prefer the sort of feel of the watercolours because you can get nice loose wet in wet techniques. So I'm going to be wetting my paper first up to where I want to have the sky. Okay, thoroughly wetting that and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to be putting some colour on and letting it move around on the paper a little bit that's the plan i'm actually forgot to say about paper um you want to use sort of thickish paper if you're collaging because obviously um you'll be sticking and gluing on here so either watercolor paper will be fine or a thick sort of cartridge drawing type paper or even thin card if you've got it okay so i'm going to start off putting on some lightish colour here. So I'm using the Analinky. This is turquoise. If you were using watercolours, you could use um, sort of mid, a mid-type blue for a stormy sky, a cobalt blue, or a, an ultramarine would be fine. Or if you want a summery sky, something like a phthalo blue is just lovely. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a slightly more stormy sky. So I'm going to be putting this colour on and letting some other colour move in here. Now I'm going to put on some dark blue. I'm going to wet that and let it run around a little bit. Just move it and let it run a little bit. Move so you get some nice things happening. Let it sort of do its do the painting on its own really. If you let the paint flow, move around, you get some quite nice things happening. Just add a tiny touch of purple in there just to make these clouds look a bit more moody and a little bit of you know, like Payne's grey sort of colour would be just lovely in here. There you go. Just let that move around and give you some nice sort of soft billowy cloud effect. that with a little bit of water so that colour softens in a little bit. You can see it's just starting to give quite a nice moody cloud effect. Just put a little bit more paint spray in there. 
this was actually the analinkies this was just a little bit of black and um, purple mixed together actually at the analinkies set or Payne's grey is similar sort of colour for using watercolours that's fine I'll leave that to do its thing if you wanted to lift out some clouds you could actually I've got some drips on here at the side the other thing you can do is just lightly take away your drips if you want to and if you wanted to um, make the clouds a little bit more prominent some lighter clouds down here you could lift out while it's wet you can actually move lift out some cloud shapes a little bit just for the green tissue just gives So what I need to do, I need to dry this off now. I find before you start your collage, it's a good idea to sort the, your decorated papers into piles of similar colours. And that just really helps, I think, when you're sort of planning your collage. Um, so I've got a pile with pinks and green, pinks and blues, greens. Um, another pile with sort of more orangey colours here. Um, blacks and browns. And some reds okay okay when you come to actually sticking and making your collage um, I'm going to be using PVA glue or you could use actually a print stick if you've got one or even wallpaper paste would be fine um, now I like to just randomly sort of rip my my piece of paper so I get nice sort of jagged edges um, you could cut them neatly if you prefer or you're doing something more detailed um, I, you can just rip the shape randomly, or if you prefer, you can sort of place it on over your sketch and very lightly, you could do this with tracing paper if you want to be really accurate, or you can just sort of draw like this. So you could give an idea where you, you need to do your shape, okay? And then I'm just going to then lightly rip into that. I don't, I say I quite like the jagged edges. Um, there which we don't need you can place it on your image and, and sort of tear off the pieces you don't think you're going to need now I always find it much much easier to start from the back of the picture and work forwards because what you can then do is you can stick the first piece on tear the next tear or cut the second piece and overlap it over the top so you don't have to worry about these ed bottom edges at all okay so I'm going to um, build, do a couple of layers, get them stuck down, and then I will show you the next stage. Okay, so as you can see, I've actually ripped and stuck on a few layers now. Okay, um, now I'm getting towards the mid-ground and foreground. Um, I need to start thinking about, um, do I want to continue down here with this, this same paper, or do I want to swap to something else? I know my original sketch was just one big hill, but you you know obviously you can adapt and change as you go. I mean I could I could stick on rip and stick <clears throat> little pieces on here if I wanted to to build it up. Or I could try and rip a slightly bigger piece. Just sort of pick, you know, build it up like this and actually have smaller pieces stuck on here to build up that little area there. Um, or the next I find is nice is just to get some different papers and hold them on and see what you think. Do I prefer that one? Do I prefer this one? Just have a little think as you go and you can obviously change and adapt as you go and decide what you think looks nice. I quite like this one actually, although it's going to look like another hill, a bit of a continuation. I quite like that. I think the variety as you get nearer the foreground, I think it's always quite nice to have a bit more colour or texture. Um, so what I can do, I can actually find, I can actually think about ripping that to a sort of shape coming down here. So rip that coming down here. Sort of something like that. I do want to make that end a little bit narrower. 
these white edges if you don't like them what you can do you can actually obviously just pull those off um, I actually quite like them because I think they give a bit of different um, definition between the different layers actually and help help with perspective um, so I quite like that actually on there so I think I'm going to go with that and I'm going to just think about these edges now you'll probably notice I've actually deliberately left some of these edges coming off off the edges of the paper I quite like that I think it makes it a little bit more fun but obviously you can have it much neater and straighter if you prefer just to keep the edge of your paper neat um, I'm going to yeah, just play around with that edge. I don't like straight edges. Um, <clears throat> I'll think about that. Okay, I think that's okay. So I'm going. I'm happy with that. So I can actually then proceed and actually stick that down. Now the papers. I always put the glue on the back of these papers rather than straight on the paper here. I just find. It's less messy because if you put glue straight on the paper, it might go where you don't actually want it. Um, it does obviously dry. It's clear this glue, but it does dry with a slight shininess to it, which um, can not always be what you want. So make sure you get right up to the edges, and then you can think about. I'm not sure if I've got that the right way around. Just yes, I have. There they are. Put that in there. Move it around a little bit until you're happy. Let's come in a tiny bit more this way, I think. Swivel that around a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. And I can just get that stuck on. And obviously these edges, if they're sticking out too much, I can just, I can think about that and rip that off a bit more if I want to. All right, so I happy with that and I'm now going to continue and just fill in these little bits here and then I'm going to come in and do some rocks. I've stuck on um, most of the um, foreground now and I just need to finish this off by sticking on some rocks over here which I'd sketched on previously. Now what I have done I have actually chosen these pieces of paper that have I did with bleach and um, analinkies and splattering because they've sort of got quite rocky sort of textures I thought which are quite nice. I've, I've already ripped them into sort of rocky shapes and now it's a matter of sort of placing them on and just sort of deciding where you want to put them. Okay, before you finally stick these on, I think that might look better like that. So I'm going to get these stuck on and then we can... Um, Think about the final touches are going to be. Um, I'll just get this glued on. The final touch is going to be um, working back over these using um, some oil pastels, some watercolour pencils, and if you would like to, you can actually also add a bit of tonal contrast using some um, the Analinky or the watercolours. I'm just going to get these quickly stuck on and then show you doing that. Okay. I've got my rock stuck on now and um, now I'm going to work back over adding some sort of final touches really just to make this look um, a little bit, little bit more tonal contrast and you could also do a little bit of mark making if you want to with um, some simple oil pastels, um, watercolour pencils and I say you can also use the Analinky um, to add tonal contrast. I'll just show you on these ones that I did earlier. So this one here um, has already, um, obviously it's a finished one, so I've actually worked back over doing some little mark, a few mark squiggles and things in the foreground, added some detail um, using, oh, you can either use a marker pen or that, that you, a fine brush to um, add some detail there. This one I've actually put some little grassy bits in there. I've added tone to the tops of the hills as well to sort of um, make them look a bit more dramatic. Um, this seascape, um, this one, um, I've worked in a little bit, done some tonal contrast um, a little bit. Anyone doing a, a seascape, um, it's very slightly different to the moorland scene. Um, on this one, when I was doing the sea, I've actually ripped up lots of smaller pieces and added um, them on here. And then on the rocks, where I've got around the edges of the rocks, I've actually used some acrylic paint and actually done some white splatters on there to sort of look like the sort of waves crushing on the rocks. Okay. 
So I'm going to show you now um, just the finishing touches, adding some tone. Okay, I was just adding a few little marks onto this one. Maybe at the base here as well, just a little bit. A few little squiggly marks. So it's quite nice to have. This is optional, so you don't need to do this if you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. Okay. I'm going to now add a little bit of tonal contrast to the tops of the hills using some of the Analinky. You could use inks, watercolours, watered down paints, that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to Add a little dark, touches of dark to the tops of the hills, just to just to push them back a little bit, really, and add a bit of definition to the tops. So all these little things I'm doing now are obviously optional. You can you can um, leave the, leave this stage out completely if you don't want to do this. Okay, I'm just going to use. Touch of blue on here, just to darken that off a little bit. Where I've got the ripped edge of the paper there, it's actually taken up the paint really nicely, which is um, I'm going to do, I'm just going to let that run a little bit actually, just to trickle down so it looks a bit more natural if you do that rather than just painting. There we are. Just let that run and trickle slightly. Just pop that one up a little bit. As you can see, it's actually sort of pushing, making it sort of much more distinct, the layers. Um, just gives you a little bit more definition there. This one, I might just do this. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to dry it off and then I'm going to do some further definition using watercolour pencils. I need to darken up further actually to make it really stand out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some clean water and see if I can let that run and trickle slightly down. So really I'm, I'm just sort of um, painting back over the collage really to um, integrate different areas um, and add, I say, add some tonal contrast really to give it a bit more oomph. Now, I'm just going to work on this area here. I'm actually going to brighten this up a little bit, this area in the foreground. I'm actually going to go in 
with a wash of the yellow, the yellow one I linky. And I'm actually going to work over the top there and just brighten that up a little bit. That area there. It's just giving it a bit of a lift. Just need to darken this area here a little bit. I'll just let that run again. Run down slightly. Off. I think I maybe need to do just something a little bit here as well. I might go in with some orange. There we are. That's fine. I think I'm going to go and dry this off and then get some watercolour pencils. Now I'm going to work with some watercolour pencils. I'm going to be using purple and blue, I think, to start with. And I'm going to be adding some definition to the rocks a little bit. So if you can decide, if you want to, which side the light is coming from and make the other side darker. So I'm going to make this side of the rocks a little bit darker, I think. But she's just going to do some sort of scribbly marks onto the rocks and then I'm going to work back into that a little bit with water to um, soften those. So I'll just get some water and I'm just going to then just and then you'll get a nice little wash that just darken that area up a little bit and you can work into um work into them while it's wet as well if you want to the watercolor pencils you could just get some more sort of scribbly scrawly marks appearing and i'm just going to also work on top of this one a little bit just just emphasize that edge just a little bit Again, get a little bit of water. It's just giving that a little bit more, a little bit more texture and definition, as you can see. So if I just hold that, hopefully you can see that that's just sort of finished it off. I mean, if you wanted to, you can do things like um, get a little bit. Of paint and actually put some grassy bits on work in there with a fine liner pen if you like as well which I might just do just around here a little bit just to give it a little bit of final definition okay so I'm just going to add a little bit of sort of tufty little bits of grass down here I think so I'm just going to put colour actually that's quite nice having that on the base of that rock a little bit as well it sort of beds it in a little bit to the landscape so I'm just going to come in here and using a fine, nice fine brush, I'm going to just come in and actually just do a few little grassy tufts coming out here. Just to finish that off, I might just do a little bit here as well, just a few little touches there. I might just um there we are and i think that's it i think i'm done with that one so okay this is now finished and i'm going to um it's going to be following a slideshow of some students work um using these techniques 
um, showing you some other ideas and images you can create with these um, decorated papers. Obviously, really, you can create whatever you like. It's up to you. Really, you're just limited by your imagination. Right, I hope you have fun practicing and playing with those techniques that I've shown you. Um, next time, we are going to be looking at um, sim using similar techniques, but actually cutting out shapes more carefully. And we're going to be looking at um, repetition and pattern. And here's a couple of examples. Um, so it can be quite more abstract, or you can actually do some sort of slightly more detailed things if you want to. Um, we are going to be using um, some marker pens acrylic or poster paints and a Tipex pen if you have one next time to work back in and make some marks and patterns. Okay, have some fun and if you do Facebook, please can you see if you can post any of your work that you do in relation to these classes on the Art Fraud page. Thank you, bye.